Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's lecture on uh, Unit 20, Organizational Behavior. So in this session, we will discuss the first uh, learning outcome, focusing on reflecting on our own personality and uh, you know perceptions, uh, understanding individual differences in important uh, in shaping and influencing managing approaches. So as we explore this topic, we will analyze uh, how our unique uh, you know personalities and uh, perspectives play to significant role in organizational behavior. So uh, by reflecting of these on these aspects, we can uh, gain insight into effective management strategies that provide uh, you know uh, diverse individuals within a team. Uh, have you got any idea about uh, uh, organizational behavior? Any idea? Uh, can you hear me, Hishika? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? And any idea about organizational behavior or anything? Uh, it simply says that the behavior of employees with uh, employers with the employees. Uh, yes, that's right. That how people act in a team or company, and how the you know this affects how well the whole, uh, you know, organization does. So it's a mix of different fields like uh, psychology, social sociology, and management. Okay. Okay. So that's your right anyway. Okay, so unit aim, aim of this unit is to develop knowledge and understanding of how organizational behavior, concept, theories, and techniques can be applied. Then students will be able to apply this knowledge in a variety of businesses, situations. Uh, they will appreciate how effective application of organizational behavior uh, principles can be used to explain why people behave and act in particular ways and to predict how uh, employees will respond to certain demands. Then this unit also develops student uh, understanding of the influence of culture and uh, culture, the operation of power and politics in organizations and how these uh, variables influence the actions and behavior of people in an organizational context. If you have any question, just let me know, okay? Just press okay. the button and you can ask me anytime. So we will start from here. Yeah. Uh, indicative contents. Uh, learning outcome one or learning outcome uh one is all about looking at the difference between individuals, especially their, uh, you know, personalities. Uh, it explored different ways we can study that make people uh, tick and introduce something called the big five uh, uh, dimensions of personality. So these includes uh, things like how outgoing someone is, uh, how agreeable, how responsible, how emotionally, uh, stable and how open they are uh, uh, to new expertise. So these dimensions relate to uh, different aspects of work like job role, performance, attitudes, leadership, and teamwork. Uh, it's using personality uh, uh, assessment for things like hiring, promoting, uh, building teams, and helping people uh, grow professionally, okay? So I'm 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 not going through every single point. So I'm just trying to explain in my own words. Okay, Shika. So okay. If if you want me to, I'll go. I will read through as well. But uh, you know where is uh, important. I will uh, you know will go through and then explain in my own words. But normally, obviously. So, like here again, perceptions. Uh, perception in uh, relationship significance of perception for developing effective personal personal and uh, uh, work relationships factor that influence an individual uh, perceptual set for example uh, personality past experiences 
expectations, learning. So uh, relationship between perception and behavior, uh, pers perceptual uh, errors and distortions, including uh, stereotyping, unconscious bias, and how cultural differences can be misconstructed. Uh, uh, and the relationship between perceptions and communications a verbal and non-verbal communication selecting information and making judgment attribution theory and interpersonal perceptions so basically understanding how perception ties into communications both in words like non and non-verbal and non-verbal uh, you know will be another key aspect uh, so lastly, we will discuss upon attribution theory and interpersonal perception, which help us understand why people behave the way they do in uh, social situations. What is uh, behavior, uh, organizational behavior? Uh, organizational behavior is the study of how individuals and group behave within organizations. As I said, uh, is like studying how people act in a team or company and how this affect how well the whole organization does. So it's a mix of different fields like uh, psychology, how our minds work, sociology, uh, uh, how, how we act in a group and management theories uh, like how to uh, run things smoothly. So the main aim of studying organizational business is to make organizations be uh, work better so in simple term it is about uh, understanding how people group and system in a workplace all interact and finding ways uh, to make everything run smoothly and effectively any question No, sir. Okay. So, video, don't see video. W what is organizational behavior? As I explained, so it's the same thing would be here. Approaches to study of human personality. Uh, approaches to the study of human personality. There are several approaches, uh, each with its own theories and methods. So, some are uh, psychodynamic approach, behavior approach, a psycho, a psychodynamic approach. Uh, this one focuses on uh, hidden thoughts, feelings, and conflicts shaping personality. Uh, theories like, uh, you know, Freudian and uh, Jungian explore how early experiences affect personality. Uh, behavior personality, any idea about behavior? Uh, personality behavioral personality or oh, sorry approach so this looks at observable behaviors and responses it suggests personality is a uh, learn thoughts rewards and punishments and behaviors can be changed uh, through conditioning any question so far So, no. okay, so human personality or human approach, uh, this approach uh, values personal growth and self-actualizations. Uh, theories like Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs and Rogers' person-centered approach uh, focus on everyone's unique potential. So uh, trait approach, this focuses on uh, uh, identifying and measuring stable personality trails. The big five personality trait, traits are a part of this uh, predicting and understanding behaviors. Then uh, we talk about uh, biological approach. Uh, this approach uh, emphasizes genetics, brain functions, uh, and psychology in shaping personality. So evol evolutionary psychology explore 
uh, explores how personality uh, traits evolve to help people adopt. So next one is uh, nomothetic and ideographic perspectives. Uh, there are two contrasting approaches to understand human behavior and, uh, you know, personality. So uh, two different ways to understand how people behave and their personalities. So the nomothetic perspective looks for uh, journal laws and principles that apply to everyone. So it it, it wants to find traits and characteristics that everyone shares and can be used to predict uh, how people will behave. So this is done by using standardized uh, measures and tests to uh, compare people's personality traits. So the nomothetic perspectives believes that all people can be understood uh, using the same psychological ideas and any uh, differences between individuals can be explained by how much of these traits they have. So, nomothetic and ideographic, uh, you know, that on, on the other hand, uh, if we talk about nomothetic and ideographic pers pers perspectives, uh, on the other hand, the ideographic perspectives focus on what makes each person unique. Uh, it wants to understand individuals in their specific situations and surroundings. Uh, this is done by using qualitative method like, uh, uh, you know, uh, interviews and case uh, studies to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, get a deep understanding of a person's personality and experiences. So uh, the ideographic perspectives believes that each person is special and to understand someone you need to uh, appreciate their unique qualities, life experiences and cultural background. Any question so far? No, sir. Okay. Yes, so implication of nomothetic and ideologic or ideographic perspectives so here we will talk about uh, you know implications so the nomothetic perspectives is helpful for uh, research it allows the development of standardized uh, 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 measures and tests that can predict and understand behavior across many people it is good for finding general patterns and trends in human behavior and for, uh, you know, uh, what is that? For, for creating interventions and treatments uh, that can be useful for a wide range of individuals. Uh, the no nomothetic perspectives has been criticized for uh, oversimplifying human behavior and uh, and uh, not capturing the complete, uh, you know, uh, complexities of individual experiences. So the ideographic perspectives, uh, though, gives a more, you know, uh, uh, context-dependent understanding of human behavior and personality. Uh, it is useful for developing uh, interventions and treatment that are tailored to an individual's specific needs and experiences uh, promoting a more holistic and empath empathetic uh, approach to uh, care. So the big five dimension of human personality, uh, ex extroversions, agree agreeableness, consciousness, emotional stability and openness to experiences. So extroversion, how outgoing and social a person is, that's mean. So agreeableness, uh, agreeableness uh, how uh, cooperative and helpful a person is, you know, 
so then if you talk about consciousness how organized and responsible he is so emotional stability how uh, calm and uh, re resilent uh, a person is then openness to experience how curious and open minded a person so these traits are uh, basically stable across different cultures age groups and age groups so they are widely are uh, used in psychology business and education uh, to understand and predict human uh, behavior so culture refers to the typical way of working within an organizations as demonstrated by the uh, behavior of the people that work for it uh, an organizations culture is influenced by the structure of the uh, organization so in in the context of organization uh, refers to the typical way people behave at work and organization culture is influenced by its culture so culture is how things usually work in a place think about it like the way people act and do things in a group like a team or a club type of business culture any idea about types of business cultures anyone is there hello andrea yeah sorry i was on mute uh, no That's... i never heard of that so how are you anyway is it your first class as well Yes, sorry, I was a bit late. I struggled no. with my laptop, and I could. That's fine, absolutely fine. Uh, end of yeah. our, yes, end of the our uh, lecture, or might be by Monday, you will get a, you know, uh, recording. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, uh, is this your uh, first module or third? No, this is my first class with you. I had before um classes on on Zoom. But uh, uh, with you, with the yeah, with the UK University is the first time. Oh, okay. So, uh, no, I mean, is this your first unit or? Yes, is the first unit. Oh, is it, so you you just started your H and D? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's right. Okay, that's that's okay. So, uh, now we are talking about uh, uh types of <clears throat> business cultures. If any question, just ask. Uh, you know, Andrea. So if any questions or anything else you want to ask, you can ask any time, okay? Yeah, uh, I didn't get from the start, but this is like the first uh, unit or is this another number? Yeah, we were just uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, organizational culture. So end of the unit, I will quickly give you, a, uh, you know, uh, highlights. So okay. Okay, thank you. I will thank you. carry on for right now for them. So uh, there are five types of uh, 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 business cultures, power culture, uh, role culture, task culture, person culture, and entrepreneurial culture. So you are based on uh, UK as well? Uh, at the moment, I'm in my home country, but yes, I live in UK. Okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. So uh, power culture power culture is uh, concentrated among a small group of people. So I'm not going through every single line. I'm just trying to explain in my own words, okay? So if you have any question or any issues, any concern, just let me know. So uh, decisions are made swiftly without much consultations. Uh, then uh, in a power culture, a few key individuals hold the decision-making authority this allows for a quick and efficient decision making as power in uh, centralized then we come to the role cultures uh, uh, characteristics are uh, highly structured with the you know uh, clearly defined roles of individuals uh, tends to be uh, bureaucratic potentially limited creativity then we talk about uh, uh, task culture uh, based on team collaboration with within groups assigned to specific tasks, adaptable and uh, responsive to change in the environment. Uh, task culture promote teamwork and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, good teamwork. Groups are formed to address specific tasks. 
uh, following for flexibility and quick adapting to changing circumstances. Sorry. Okay, so person culture, then uh, we talk about person cultures, uh, empowers trained workers to freely share knowledge and uh, expertise. Ex in a person culture, the focus is on individuals who are empowered to share their expertise. Uh, this can foster a more independent and knowledge sharing environment. Uh, then entrepreneurial uh, culture, so encourage risk taking and creativity. Failure is accepted, uh, accepted as a learning opportunity. Uh, this culture promotes innovation, risk taking and uh, and creativity. Fail, uh, failure is seen as a part of the learning process, uh, encouraging a dynamic forward thinking environment. Uh, then uh, we talk about uh, uh, organizational culture. Uh, organizational culture is described as the way we do things around uh, here. Uh, it includes beliefs, knowledge, attitudes, norms, and customs in an organization. So organization have unique cultures and what's acceptable behavior in one may not be in another. So cultures can develop over time or change suddenly due to significant events. Uh, the components and influences of organizational cultures are discussed, including norms, symbols, shared values, uh, size, you know, technology, diversity, uh, age, history, ownership. So, uh, writers such as Handy and uh, Hofstads have contributed to understanding organizational uh, culture. So here, a uh, set of norms of behavior, symbols and symbolic actions, organizational cultures, part of, you know, that a set of shared values and beliefs so set of norms of behavior, this means there is a collection of rules or guidelines for how people in the organizational organization should behave. Okay, so symbolics and symbolic actions, uh, symbols are things that represent or stand for something else in an organization. These could be things like a logo, special a handshake or even certain, uh, you know, stuffs. Symbolic actions or behaviors that have a special meaning within the organization. So again, organizational culture, as I said, this is overall things work and the atmosphere within the organization. Uh, then a belief set of shared values and beliefs. They are what people in the organization think is true or important like the belief that hard work lead to success. In simple terms, it's like saying in a group of organization, uh, there are certain rules for how people should behave, special things that have meaning, symbols, and are all a way of doing things and common things that uh, everyone thinks are important. For example, values and beliefs. Uh, next one is uh, the factor that shape the culture of organizations. Any any idea, anyone? So factors influencing organizational culture, we will talk about size, how big the organization is. We talk about technology, how much the organization uses advanced tools, uh, organization uh, uh, and, uh, and advanced tools and process. So this could be related to the products uh, the may, they make or how they get their work done. Diversity, uh, how varied the uh, organization is. Uh, this could be in terms of the different products they offer, 
uh, where they operate or the mix of culture among their stakeholders. Uh, age, how old is the business or the management managers of the business? Uh, this is about whether the decision makers have learned from the past. Could be uh, their past mistakes. So then history, what was, uh, you know, worked well for the organizations in the past? Are the leaders willing to learn from mistakes or successful? Uh, they have had before. So then uh, uh, ownership, who owns the organization? Is it one person, few big investors or many smaller shareholders? Then some other uh, influences on culture. Uh, does the organization, organization encourage employees to take their own initiative or do decision always have to go to hires up? Then risk tolerance. Uh, we talk about the degree of risk tolerance. Are managers only allowed to follow low risk, low risk strategies? <coughs> So that means our managers only allowed to follow safe strategies. So then uh, clarity of direction. Is there a clear focus and objectives and performance expectations? A well-defined integration between groups. Uh, do integration here. You can see that integration between groups. Uh, do different units within the organizations work together? Is management approachable and is communication clear to all levels of staff? Uh, then another one is reward system. Uh, reward system uh, here. That's the reward system. Are individuals rewarded based on their performance? Are they are a clear criteria for reward? Then conflict. Tolerance are employees encouraged to air grievances. Grievances, then uh, communications patterns. You know, uh, is there a formal uh, hierarchy in communication, or is there a more informal network? Then uh, formalization of clothing and office layout. Uh, you can say. Are there strict rules about how people should dress or how offices should be arranged? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, then uh, type of uh, employment. Type of employment. We talk about the kind of people employed, uh, graduates, young. So what kind of people does the organization hire? Are they mostly graduates, young, old, etc.? So in, in, in simple terms, these factors are like the different ingredients that mix together to create uh, the unique flavor of culture of an organization. Any question? Everyone's okay? Yes, no, thank you. Okay. Ishika? No, I have no question. Uh, Charles Handy's Cultural Types, uh, one of the uh, writer. Uh, so let's break down Charles Handy Cultural Types and uh, Sachin's Culture Model in simpler terms. So Charles Handy Cultures are power cultures, role cultures, task cultures, person cultures. Yeah. So... Uh, Power cultures, in this type, there is one central source of power and influence often represented by a single person. It's like a small business where the owner has absolute control and uh, there are few formal rules. So then we talk about rule cultures, <coughs> also known as, uh, you know, uh, denoted by the Greek god Apollo. So he has people define their jobs based on duties rather than purpose. So this is uh, common in bureaucratic organizations, you know, high highest level organization, high level people, bureaucrats. So where the structures determine authority and hierarchy and uh, status are emphasized. 
then uh, task cultures or task culture denoted by the Greek god Athena. This culture focuses on achieving specific tasks and flexibility is important to meet deadline. It's often a scene in project teams working uh, towards in particular goals without obstacles. Person cultures are uh, denoted by the Greek god uh, Dionysius. So uh, characterized, uh, characterized by existing to fulfill the needs of specific individuals involved. It's found in small uh, participatory organizations where individuals handle all duties themselves, such as a uh, uh, you know, barrister in uh, chamber. So next one is uh, Sachin culture, cultural model. Uh, the culture of an organization is initially shaped by a, its first leaders. Later leaders are chosen based on the existing culture. Understanding the culture is important for leaders. So there are three levels of uh, uh, culture. Uh, here you can see, you know that uh, after... Uh, Facts, then basic assumptions here, exposed values, and then understanding beliefs. So after facts, these are, uh, you know, uh, visible aspects of culture, like people, how people dress. Uh, these are the, uh, you know, uh, uh, how, how people dress. So espoused values, these are the uh, strategies uh, here, exposed values when we talk about. So these are the uh, strategies and uh, uh, goals often expressed th uh, through company slogans. Uh, basic assumptions, uh, basic assumptions and values. These are deeply ingrained and unconscious uh, values. So new employees may find these challenges to understand contributing uh, uh contributing to difficulties in Im implementing changes so in simple term handy's cultural types are like different styles and organizations uh, might have and sachin's model emphasizes that leaders and culture are closely linked with culture existing at very visible expressed and deep rooted levels Hofstadt's culture uh, dimensions. Uh, Hofstadt studied uh, differences in uh, cultural over 100,000 IBM employees worldwide to understand how culture might affect businesses' behavior. So he identifies six culture uh, dimensions here, Hofstadt cultural dimensions. So... Uh, Power distance, individual versus uh, collectivism, uh, uh, masculinity and femininity, uh, uncertainty, uh, avoidance, long versus short term uh, orientations, and indulgence versus uh, restraints. So individuals versus collectivism, this looks at how much people prefer to work independently or in a groups. Uh, then uh, if we talk about uncertainty, avoidance index so deals with how much a society can tolerate uncertainty. Uh, for instance, some cultures like France and Japan use bureaucracy to reduce uncertainty because they don't uh, like it. Uh, power distance explores how much less powerful members of organizations ex expect and accept a uh, unique distribution of powers. For example, South American societies uh, might uh, uh, tolerate power differences more than North European cultures. Then uh, feminine, femininity in uh, masculine culture, there, are, there, there is a clear distinction between gender roles uh, with male focuses on work, power and success for example, uh, uh, Japanese culture and uh, feminine culture like 
Finland have smaller differences between gender roles, men and women. Uh, Long-term uh, orientations uh, based on uh, Confucianism, dy dynamism, it's about uh, values associated with long-term orientations. Uh, for example, uh, China emphasizing uh, theft and perseverance and short-term orientation. For example, Germany focuses on tradition, social obligations, and face uh, perceptions. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, face protect, uh, protections. Any questions so far? Uh, database around individual personality differences. Any questions so far? No, no questions. Okay. So personality dimensions, some psychologists argue about the uh, numbers and nature of personality dimensions. Uh, as I was talking about big five opponents, consciences, extra, uh, you know, version, agreeableness and uh, uh, neurotic, uh, neuro, uh, uh, ticism. So, <clears throat> yeah. So basically, these this all of these are one model, but there are a discussion about having more or different dimensions. Uh, like to job roles and the performance, there is a, a, a database about how strongly personality uh, dimensions are connected to job roles and performances. Uh, some studies find uh, positive links, especially within traits like uh, consciousness and emotional stability, but others uh, find weaker or no con connections. Uh, next is uh, job attitudes. Personality dimensions are also linked to job attitudes such as satisfaction and commitment. Uh, for example, extraversion and emotional stability are positively related to job satisfaction, uh, while uh, neuroticism is negatively related. And then we talk about uh, leadership uh, abilities. Uh, personality dimensions are associated with the leadership abilities where uh, extraversions and consciousness are positively linked to effectiveness. Uh, however, this connection might depend on leadership style and the specific situation. Uh, then uh, teamwork uh, abilities. That's the uh, uh, last one. Personality dimensions also influence teamwork abilities like communication skills and conflict management, agreeableness is positively related to work, uh, while extraversion is positively related to communication skill. So personality differences and ability play an important role in job role performance, uh, attitudes, leadership, and teamwork. So however, ongoing database continues about the nature and extent of these connections. Application of personality and other forms of psychometric uh, assessment in selection and promotion decision, team building and professionals development uh, programs. So application of personality and psychometric assessments, uh, personality and psychometric assessments find application in various areas, including, uh, you can say selection, promotion, decisions, team building and professional development program. So some examples like uh, if you can see here, uh, you know, the selection and promotions and or uh, select selection and promotion decisions or decisions, these assessments and organization is making informed decisions about hiring and promoting employees. 
For instance, uh, the big five personality assessment providing insight into an F, uh, applicant's traits, uh, aligning them with the organization's culture and job requirements. So uh, cognitive ability test assess, assess aptitude for uh, specific tasks or role. Uh, then team building. Personality assessment contribute to effective team building. Managers use them to understand team members, uh, traits, enabling better role assignment that, uh, you know, uh, leverage uh, individual strengths. So these assessment can also identify potential conflicts and enhance communication within the team. Then uh, obviously uh, very common professional development program, these assessment assist employees in organization, organizing strategies and uh, areas for improvement. So they guide professional uh, development program like training and uh, coaching to uh, co uh, coaching to address individuals needs. So assessment such as emotional intelligence, Tests help in developing skills related to communication, conflict resolution, and uh, leadership. So discover you may, uh, Mayor's Briggs personality type. Uh, it's gone. What is your personality uh, type? Discover your Mayor's Briggs personality type. Understanding your personality type involves considering prefer pre uh, preferences in four parts of uh, opposing traits. Answering the question can help determine you may uh, Briggs type. So, extraversion as uh, introversion. Uh, are you outwardly or inwardly focused? If you prefer talkative, outgoing, and loss, fast paced environment, you uh, learn towards extraversion. So, if you are a reserved, private, enjoy a slower pace with time for compliment, com uh, uh, contemplations, and tend to think inside your head, so you learn toward introversion. Sensing versus intuition, how do you uh, prefer to take in informations? If you focus on the uh, reality of how things are, pay and attention to concentrate uh, facts and detail and prefer ideas with, uh, you know, uh, practical applications, you learn towards sensing. So if you imagine the possibilities of how things could be noticed, the big picture, see uh, how everything connects and enjoy ideas and concepts for their own sake. So you learn towards uh, intuition. Uh, thinking. Gee. Thinking T versus feeling F. So how do you prefer to make decisions? If you make decisions in an impersonal way using logical reasoning and value, justice and fairness, you learn towards thinking. If you base your decisions on personal values, consider how your actions affects others and value harmony and empathy. So you learn towards feelings. Uh, judge versus P uh perceiving judging how do you prefer to live your out life if you prefer to have matters settled think rules and deadlines should be respected and like uh, related step by step so uh in instructions you learn how uh judging if you prefer to leave your options open, see rules and uh, deadline as flexible and enjoy improving uh, 
and making things up as you go or uh, you learn towards perceiving personality types uh, understanding your personality type can provide valuable insights into your preferences and behaviors, enhancing self-awareness and interpersonal dynamics. So certainly here's a brief overview of each you know, personality type long, along with the, some common characteristics and potential uh, professions that may uh, that that may align with their trade. So keep in mind that these are generalizations and individuals can differ within the same personality types. Any questions so far? No questions, thank you. Uh huh. Good. Ishika? No, sir. Uh, emotional intelligence, any idea about emotional intelligence? Any comments? Okay, emotional intelligence is like a set of skills that help people handle their own emotions and understand others. So it is about being aware of how you feel and how others feel and then using the knowledge of, uh, you know, knowledge to uh, navigate social situations and build good relationships. Uh, like imagine you are in a group and someone seems upset. So if you have high emotional intelligence, you might notice their feelings, understand why they feel that way and maybe even help them feel better. So this skills involves things like clear communications and building connections with others. Uh, while emotional intelligence is not exactly personality trait, it is connected to personality. So for example, if you are naturally outgoing, extroverted, you might find it easier to connect with others emotionally. And uh, on the flip side, if you tend to worry a lot neuroticism, managing your own emotions and understanding others might be a bit more challenging. So the good thing is the emotional intelligence can be improved with practice. If you work on these skills, you might see benefit in how well you communicate, lead and get along with others. In jobs that uh, require strong social skills, emotional intelligence can be a big asset. Individual differences or individual difference, perception, uh, perception and relationship. Here we talk about perception and its importance in pers uh, personal and work relationship. So perception is like the lens through which you can see and understand the world around you. It influences how you interpret experiences, interact with others and uh, process information. So why uh, perceptions matter in relationship Perce perception helps you you know understanding understanding others and communication so uh, when we talk about understanding others perception helps you understand what others are thinking and feeling when you accurately perceive others it builds sympathy the ability to understand the share the feelings of others so this understanding strengthens your connections with people. Then second one is uh, communications. Uh, perception plays a role in how you interpret message. People might see or hear the same things but perceive it differently based on their own experiences. Effective communication involves being aware of your perceptions and considering how they might affect your understanding of a message. So if, if I say in one you know, line in simple term, perception is like putting on different glasses to see the world. By understanding how other wears their glasses, you can connect with them better, communicate more effectively and build stronger relationship. Conflict resolutions, uh, conflict resolution and building trust. Perception is like the glosses through which we can see the world. When I, 
it comes to conflict, misunderstandings and misperceptions can make things uh, tricky. So let's say two people wearing different glasses seeing the same situation in different ways. So that is a, uh, that's a recipe for conflict. Understanding how others see things is the key to resolving conflicts by putting on their glasses. Uh, you can get their perspective. So it's like saying, I see where you are coming from. This helps in fix misunderstandings and prevent conflicts uh, from popping up again. So building trust, building trust is another important part. If you can accurately understand uh, how others see uh, things and communicate effectively, you are on the path of to building trust. Trust is like the uh, glowing relationship. It builds on respect and understanding. So by turning into others' perspectives, you can establish strong relationship based on mutual aspects. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, no, I will go uh, through the personality, past experience and expectations. Uh, factors influence uh, perceptual set. Uh, personality, think of personality as the unique flavor each person adds of to their glasses. Someone opens to uh, new experiences, might see the world within a splash of creativity. Past experiences, if someone had a bad experience before, they might stick a caution sticker on a similar situation in the future. It's like a saying, last time I tried this, it did not go well. So expectations are like setting the stage for what you are about to see. If you are ex expecting a fantastic you know, restaurant based on friends, recommendations, you are more likely to see the food and services as uh, excellent. It's like putting on glasses that highlight the positive. So uh, uh, in short, everyone wears their own set of glasses shaped by their personality, past experiences and expectations. To build strong relation, it is important to be aware of our own glasses and try on others' glasses too. This involves really, uh, you know, listening, talking openly and being uh, willing to understand where others are coming from. That's why that, that way we can build better connections in both personal and professional parts of our lives. Any question, Ishika, uh, Andrea, anyone? No, sir. Yeah, no so that's, that's it for today. Our to, uh, tomorrow second lecture will be on, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tomorrow at one o'clock, same time. And I will continue with this as well. Uh, then, uh, you know, uh, just try tomorrow's link and I'll finish this lecture before I start another one. So uh, any questions so far? No questions. Okay. So, Andrea, uh, I was just, uh, you know, that uh, started with the, what is organizational behavior. Have you got any idea about organizational behavior? Uh, about the lesson today? Yes, today's lesson. Uh, no, no, I don't think I've, uh, well, okay, I've heard more yeah. or less of it, but no, yeah, I don't or, understand that. Yeah, uh, organizational behavior is like studying how people act in a team or company and how this affects how well the whole organization does. So it's a mix of different fields. As I right. said you know earlier, like a psychology, how our mind works, sociology, how we act in a groups and management theories, how to run things smoothly. Okay? Right. Yes. That's it. So I will explain a bit more tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow, same time, one o'clock. Uh, so any question, any concerns, any issues, please drop me an email at uh, yasir at ukversity.co.uk and uh, uh, I left my number for you guys as well. Uh, if you have Ishika already. Yes, I have. 
yeah it's uh, uh andrea or ishika if there is any uh, urgent question or any issues or anything else you can drop me message as well whatsapp okay. zero zero seven four double six two zero one three one five you can see here okay yes that's my number okay or you can drop me an email uh, yasir at ukversity.co.uk okay okay thank you very much for today and uh, have a good day uh, andrea uh, evening and shika uh, i think so it's night there good night as well okay um i have a question really quick yes yes andrea um okay so as this says is unit 20 is this the beginning of the course or i'm a bit late no i just joined the program a few days ago yeah, it, it does not matter. Units, you can you can start from unit twenty. You can start from unit once. Okay, okay. okay, okay that that yes. that does not matter. You start. Right. Today, okay. So. Right. I thought I've missed some lessons. That's why I wanted to no, know. Yeah, that's okay. absolutely fine. That's not any problem. Okay. 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 Great. Thank Thanks. you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much. Uh, bye, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow at one. See you. Thank you. Okay, Shika. Okay, Andrea, bye, both of you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.